Here at Sounded Fun, an airplane that always catches my attention is one that sits on this very space virtually every year for I don't know a long time. Anyway, now there's another one. As I roll by, Robert's got a new one. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Robert Basley, who has made an entire profession out of making old airplanes. But they're not old airplanes, they're new airplanes. But maybe not this one. So explain my confusion here yeah. for me, Robert. Yeah, basically we build reproduction or replica aircraft uh, using modern materials and generally aluminum construction. Uh, it's dressed up to look like the old airplane. Uh, this particular airplane, you have seen it once before. Uh, we built this airplane initially approximately 15 years ago. It was here at this show, I think, 12 years ago we decided, something 10 to 12 years ago. And then uh, we had had it out the hangar, and it was near the door, and it was the airplane that came this year. <laughs> I, like, I like it. I love the little airplane. It moves the one that was near the door, though, that was Correct. the closest. Yeah, the closest <laughs> to the end of the hangar, so that's the one that we brought this year. I see. Well, it's a handsome airplane. As always, your airplanes get a lot of attention. We walked up there with a crowd around it. We had to chase them away. Sorry about that. We'll let them back in here soon. But tell me about this particular one then. Now, not not this particular one, but this style of aircraft that you created. Well, this is a 80% scale Fokker D7. Most of our aircraft are full scale. We have done some three-quarter of the years past. But this particular one, we chose to build it 80% because the original D7 is a large aircraft. And it had an inline receiver. So this is a Fokker D7. That's, right. that's what this is in Okay. Now, the original airplane had an inline 180 horse Mercedes in it. There really are no large inline engines that are currently available, so we designed this at 80% scale. It'll still handle a pilot up to 300 pounds for a load of fuel. Really? So it's big enough to do what it needs to do. And it's still convenient enough to roll it in out of the hangar and move it around to the We have a Hertz F30, which is another okay. person there. We have had customers put everything from 65 Continentals, uh, the 0200s, and Hertz, and the Hertz factory. Uh, up to the builder. Yes, yeah, up to the builder. Yeah, obviously so we build a kit build there. Yeah, we build an engine mount for the, the Lyco, the, the Continental in this, the Hertz, and the Hertz uh, Alright, so the recreation is great, and you've been able to do this, what looks like a very old airplane, but with modern materials, etc. So what does that mean to the builder? If somebody wants to tackle this, let's assume a decent mechanical avenue. What's involved? Okay. This aircraft is an entirely aluminum structure. So the Lagrons, all the vertical diagonal members, the each large is written. And so I'd like the builder would have to take every tube will be cut to rough one that has kind of a whole bunch of it in any place. The gym is basically the workbench with the full size drawn on the scale ah, right okay. on top of the workbench. Screw down the wooden blocks to hold everything in place. And then we pre cut all the gussets. We've got a CC cutting table. Ah, okay. All the gussets are pre cut. You lay them over there, transfer the holes. Really so started that sounded more complex. When you end it, it's like, oh, okay, I could probably use that. Simple stuff. Yeah, it's all just basic hand tool kind of stuff. Uh, nothing sophisticated about it. Uh, keep things square and perpendicular. That's really about it. I love the idea of building right on full size. There's no doubt about this. that part or this part. No, put it there. If it fits there, it's that part. I love that. Okay, so what would somebody have to invest? Again, uh, reasonable at mechanical aptitude. How long are they going to invest to get the airplane? The, this airplane, the 80% scale airplane, is probably going to take a guy in the neighborhood of 400 to 450 hours. That's it? That's it, yeah. That's not bad. The full scale airplanes, you're looking at probably over 700 hours just because they're a little bit bigger, but, but still, they're stuff, yeah. pretty fast you know, build airplanes. They're pretty simple build airplanes, the key to them. They're not real sophisticated. Because there's no wood in it, you're not steaming wood, waiting on uh, to dry, the moisture content to cool it. You don't have any of those kind of processes. Okay. Which the originals did. Correct. Yeah, so those guys, they had to have some real expertise to do that. And uh, so this is much easier. So are you doing a lot of riveting? Lots of riveting. Lots of riveting. 4,000 plus rivets in there. Is that so right? I would recommend Now, they're not obvious to us. As we look at what I see here, I don't really see any rivets. It's pretty much all covered. But it's all buried. Yeah. Yeah. I would recommend a pneumatic rivet gun in the airplane. It'll save a lot of squeeze in your hand. Unless you want to get one really strong hand. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's go back to uh, uh, the builder now. What about space? You said simple tools, but what about space to do this? you got to have these full-size things here. Gonna have a drawing that's as big as this whole airplane, or what? Yeah. We do work on it on a four foot by sixteen foot work table. Okay. Uh, you can do it on individual pieces. Well, that'll fit in a garage, though. Oh, absolutely. Okay. You can do it as small as about eleven feet. But uh, we go ahead and build a sixteen foot table. It's simple. Then your wing goes like this. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Two sheets of plywood set on 
the Green 2 before is on edge on two saw horses and that's how it Okay. All right, so we've got the airplane assembled now, but we still got to do things like painting. We're going to do engine install and what instruments. Tell me a little bit about some of those details. Again, we're pretty basic. We've got an airspeed, altimeter, compass, skin ball. And that's really all we have. That's probably all it had in the original one. As much as it had in the original So the instrumentation is pretty simple. Painting, this is a latex-based product, uh, so you can brush or roll it on. Oh, really? Uh, you, you can spray it if you want to, but the, this is all the brush. Is that right? Well, I would think for a lot of people that would be a lot easier. You don't have to spray booth for you. Yeah, right. And now all that, you know, masking and drafting, if you can do all that stuff, that's a lot of effort. The latex paints have come a long way in the last several years. There's a product that you can put in them that allows them to flow out like an automotive paint. Is that right? So you put the Floetrol in them, uh, brush or roll it on, don't touch it for about six yeah, eight hours. This and it does not out. look like it. It's, I mean, yeah. it's smooth. I'm not seeing what I would expect to see with a roller. Correct. Right. It'll just flow right out and uh, once it dries, it just. Like and this is a new development in paint in the last few years? Yeah, it's been several, yeah, for like eight or ten years or something. Okay. Yeah, it's called, it's called Okay. Well, that's an interesting innovation, too. So, so the whole, you know, painting is an art form in my mind, but a lot less so if you can roll it on. I mean, you still got to do it carefully, of course. Careful, you don't want to overlap and stuff. But that's great. So I want to combine two things. You said at first that you're using modern materials to emulate an old airplane, and then we talked about how a builder actually goes through it. That sounds pretty straightforward too. But but you are when you when you're using modern materials, you're not just using new hardware. You're using some more established concepts. For example, some of the earlier airplanes actually warped the wings. That's what the Wright brothers did, and that was a way that you know Kel said they were emulating a bird. That's what a bird does. Uh, but that gets kind of complex and so forth and could be not as effective as you want. So you not only are making it look old, but you're actually modernizing the way it operates and its structure too. That's Am correct. I right about that? Yeah. Go a little further for me. Yeah. On the wing warper, uh, we, we basically built a, a set of ailerons into the trailing edge of the wing and then we fabric covered both sides. So when you walk up and look at the airplane, uh, you would know that it, was, it looks like a wing warping airplane, but buried inside there was a full set of ailerons. Uh, okay. It, it would Makes it effectively flex the trailing edge, and, and, and that's how we flew the airplane. But this particular airplane is, is was a very conventional three-axis airplane this day. It has elephant ear ailerons, uh, elevator, and a rudder. So it's basically power steering or power boosted back in the day. Fokker figured that out. So there wasn't much to change in that aspect. It was pretty pretty handy. So we replicated that fairly close. Now we do have modern control ratios, so we get the, the, the stick pressures and feels to. Move. This airplane flies similar to a Cub, let's say. I mean, if you oh, check that a guy, right, huh? if a guy's comfortable in a Cub. We'll let you go find the airplane. Oh, is that right? It's just okay. a rudy, It looks a little more daunting than it is, no, just it's because really it's... A conventional tail dragger airplane. You do have to have tail for a time. But we've got fairly light wing loadings, about 4.5 pounds per oh, square okay. foot. Oh, okay, yeah, it's pretty light. We've got 110 horsepower in the front of it. It's going to fly pretty quick. You yeah, turn yeah. it into wind and you get in throttle about three seconds for airplane, <laughs> and the will cause you great economy. Wow, so, okay, that's quick getting off the ground. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit now, then a nice segue into... Tell me how it actually flies then. Talk to me about, uh, you know, what it's like in the air. You said it's like a Cub, but for somebody that hadn't flown a Cub, you know, what does that mean? It's, it's just joystick and rudder pedals and all that? We've got a conventional stick with a set of rudder pedals. Uh, this airplane doesn't have brakes, so there's really nothing to go there. Uh, Control-wise, it's three to five pounds of control pressure, so it's okay. pretty light on the controls. On the, uh, it's because of the boosted ailerons. They've got that elephant ear on them. And they figured that out back in the day. If anything surface they would hang in front of the hinge line would effectively get power steering or light ah, controls. So that when you say elephant ear, you're not talking about it being huge because it's not that large not that an ailerons on the surface. There's a portion of it that's in front of the hinge line. Portion back there, right here. Yeah, and you can actually move that. If you want to control that it exposes itself like a, a modern day. Uh, spades would on an aerobatic right, airplane. Right, right. People have seen those. Control. If you don't know what a spade is, it's the part that hangs down from the aileron. And it's kind of like power steering, if Correct. you will. Yeah, like I think you see them on high-performance aerobatic airplanes. Well, this has a little bit of that built right into it. So, so the controls are nice. And uh, they figured this out back in, let's see, when was this flying as its original? 1917. 1917. I mean, you're talking 14 years after the Wright brothers' first flight. And they already had that stuff. They already had that figure. They, they did it on the elevator. They did it on the rudders. Well, Anthony Parker was a pretty smart guy, I guess. Yeah, he had a lot of but, but we do have a newer airfoil on it, too, a little bit more modern airfoil. Ah, uh, okay. The uh, airfoil itself changed, too. Then. Correct. We okay. changed that a little bit. Not a lot, but how, it's got how a nice so? Lead. Tell me a little bit of how it's different than the original. It's got a different leading edge radius on it, so okay. it's just much more benign and small. Ah, okay. We did that. It's not a really fast airplane, but it, it flies slow really well. Get the airplane down. Oh, is that right? Okay, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's pretty slow. All right. And so what is a typical cruise speed then? 75, 80 in reserve point. Miles an hour now. Miles per hour. Miles per hour, okay. So yeah, this is just a joy machine to go up and all that and the fact that when you land, you're going to have to be talking to some people. It definitely gets what the heck is that out. thing? <laughs> and the other thing you can see pretty well, because it's a flat-sided airplane, uh, you can see right out the sides and some tailwheel airplanes are a little bit hard to see. Like yep. the triplane, it's got the big round cowl. Oh, yeah. The camel is harder to see out of this. Is a, Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Looking down, looking down here. I mean, the pilot can see. Correct. You can see right here. All right. So now uh, we've built the airplane. We've gone up and we've flown it some. But now I come back to the beginning of all of that again and go, okay. I told you I wasn't that great a builder. So I'm the kind of guy that's going to need some help. How can you help me? Well, we do a builder's assist uh, program in our shop, where uh, instead of us shipping the kit to you. Uh, we'll prepare the kit. You just come in. We'll work with you on a daily basis. Uh, we can help you frame the fuselage, the landing gear, build the wing ribs, uh, whatever part of the kit you're uncomfortable with. Or you say you, if you're comfortable building the fuselage and you've never covered, you could bring the airplane back and I can help you cover. Oh, okay. We've had builders that have built the whole airplane. Yeah, said, covering is its own little it's its skill own, set. Yeah, you got the framing, you got the covering. I've had builders complete the airplane, <laughs> paint it, and said, I'm not comfortable with my mechanic work as an engine. Installation, can you, can, so they brought it back, and I've done the engine installation for them. And we do we'll do test flights for them too. Customers wow, okay. full we'll service flight for them, so we can do any piece of it, you know, any, any portion that you want done. And where are you located, Robert? We're in Holden, Missouri. We got around a little which grass is where Kansas City area. Kansas City area. Okay, okay. All right, so that puts it. So you're right in the middle of the country. Yep. Pretty easy for everybody to get to. And I'll bet you it'd be a kind of a fun experience to come down. We got a lot of fun, neat airplanes. How many there, different so airplanes have you designed? We've got 32 different airplanes now <laughs> in the marketplace. They're all World War One. Well, I said World War One. Some of them, the Bolero, start as early as 1908. But our, our newest design is the 1918. The newest is 1918. So we're working 1908, 1918. So it's the kind of time. Yeah, yeah. You have like dominated that space. You own that space as far as I'm concerned. Now, and you've done so well at it that some people out in Hollywood have come to you and said, we're making a movie, we need this or that or the other thing. How have you responded to them when they've done that? We've done three movies now. We three? did the Flyboys movie, we built four airplanes for that. And then wow. we did the Amelia Earhart movie, we built the Boyerio and the Green Sonia for that. And then uh, the last one's Game of Aces, we did a triplane and a uh, Marine. Cool. I'm sorry, SC5. SC5. Yeah, so, so a movie star, an airplane designer, a recreator of smiles for people who love yeah, yeah, the yeah. Or, or tinker. <laughs> or tinkers. Okay. Tinker. <laughs> I like that. I've asked you a lot of questions. You've got so many models, people have got to come to you. How do we find you on the web? Uh, Airdrome Airplanes website, or we do an Airdrome Airplanes Facebook page. We do a, about a, every month an update. We call it the What's Update. What we're doing on the shop, what I'm working on. I post a little short 30 second, maybe one minute videos as to what I'm working on. It just kind of gets you the feel of what's involved with building the airplane. Cool. So we'll uh, give some links about how to find you there. And uh, we've done a lot of coverage of these airplanes over the years and all kinds of other affordable aviation can be found on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining Robert Basley and myself here at Sun and Fun.